Hi, this is Rich Harrington, and I've got a first look at Luminar 2018, and I want to show you how awesome it is. I've had a chance to dig into it, and I really love the new features. All right, I'm going to open up a raw file here, and one of the things that really stands out in the new Luminar is how great it is at handling raw images. This makes it very easy to develop the file. Now, when you open up a raw file, there's going to be a filter you want to immediately add, and that is called raw develop which works quite well. You can also pick from workspaces. For example, if I just say that I want to work with the essentials workspace here, there's raw develop tossed on. And what this makes it easy to do is pull down things like the highlights and lift the shadows in those raw files, which really maximizes the shadows and highlights. Plus we can pop the whites and pull down the blacks for nice crisp detail little clarity and it really starts to come through or a little contrast and that works great hand in hand with the accent AI filter which analyzes the image and brings out all of those key details. You'll also see controls for things like vibrance and saturation as well as a digital polarizer that you can use to really cut down on reflections and glare in areas like water and skies. A little bit of structure brings out some of the details and the metal and the sky and the clouds and it works great. Or we can even put a traditional vignette to lighten or darken the edges. Now that's pretty simple and straightforward and that's the real benefit of the tool. It makes it easy to work with a wide range of images. And if you see the before and after, it really does a great job of unlocking details in a raw image. Now, Let's switch to a totally different example for a moment, and we'll do a portrait example, this time working with a JPEG file. Now, this JPEG essentially looks finished, and even if you've already developed images or have photos that you feel are good or great, Luminar can really help bring out more details still. So let's switch and go to the portrait workspace, and you're gonna see, of course, that we have the develop filter. Now this makes it simple to go ahead and bring out additional details. For example, a little clarity there, and we can lift the shadows slightly while recovering the highlights, and it still really helps bring out some definition. You can also apply something here called a lookup table, which is really useful. Lookup tables or LUTs are essentially color grades, and you can use this to apply something that looks like a digital film stock. So in this case, a classic Kodachrome or a very light film stock look. And this is just gonna change that overall image. What you'll notice is, is you've got great controls here to dial in. You've got great controls here to dial in the amount as well as control the saturation and contrast. And that just does a nice job of taking the digital image and making it more filmic. Plus, we can do things like a nice soft glow here on our portraits to really get a nice luminescent quality, or take advantage of the high key look to get a dramatic looking portrait with bright faces, or there's the matte look filter. Now, instead of just doing a traditional vignette, I wanna show you how awesome we can really have control here. So I'm gonna just toss on a new adjustment layer, and an adjustment layer lets you apply a filter to its own layer and that makes it simple to control it. So for example, if we toss on exposure here, I can go ahead and just pull down the exposure, and now that filter right here itself, or the entire adjustment layer, can have its own layer mask. So I'll go with a radial mask and just click and drag, and you see that we get great control. So for example, we can start to skew this a little bit and even rotate it a little bit and place the center point right on our subject. Now I've got a much more interesting vignette and it's really awesome how we can adjust the feather and the complete controls here for this. And now what that gives me is the ability to just pull down the backdrop a little bit. Plus that filter itself has its own layer mask. So if I want, what I can do here is actually just click to erase. So I'll choose my paintbrush tool and grab my eraser and I can just erase away some of these areas. So you see that now her body is not being affected as much 
And now that's on that individual tool. There we go. It had its own mask. We'll click done and the filter mask combines with the overall layer mask. So again, you see that these two can all work together. So you can have a filter mask and a layer mask working together hand in hand, giving you total control. So for example, we can get a nice shape here and angle that in right on the subject there. And I love how it's applying to the backdrop, but it looks like we completely relit this portrait. You'll notice that all of those states are being tracked here in the history panel. So this makes it easy for you to see what's really happening. And if you need to go backwards in time, you can do so all the way back to the original file or take a look at each step along the way and see exactly what you've done to get it to that final image. All right, let's go ahead and open up another photo. I'll choose File, Open, and I want to show you some great new controls for correcting lens issues. So in this case, I shot the Lincoln Memorial from a slightly lower angle, and you can see that that's creating some perspective issues here. The photo's not straight, plus it's got a couple of leaning lines. So no big deal. We'll go ahead and apply a workspace. I'll go with my standard workspace here and we'll just jump right into the ability to transform the object. So I can start to tilt this object and you see that we're tilting it in the horizontal axis or the vertical axis. And now this makes it easy to make sure that things are lining up. We can also compensate for any lens distortion that might be causing any perspective problems. So this makes it pretty easy for you to take any issues such as curved lines and remove those. There we go. And you see it just starts to shape the image into the ideal shape. Plus I've got that image now straight. Now we'll just jump on into crop and using the preset list here, there's a wide range of sizes. So you can choose exactly what you need and crop the image to the desired target size. And that makes it very simple to get the type of image that you were hoping for. All right, now that we got that, let's just jump on into the adjust tab here, recover the highlights, lift the shadows, and put a little clarity in. And we'll combine that with the accent AI filter. Now in this particular image, which was shot late at night, there's a lot of noise in here. So we've got a real-time denoise filter that we can use to really clean up the image. So what I can do is just click to add a filter and I'll choose denoise. This is gonna allow us to pull out any noise from the image. So I can remove luminosity noise or color noise and you'll see that it just pulls it out. If we zoom into 100%, it's a lot easier to judge and that image has been really cleaned up quite a bit. There we go. Now, in this particular image, shot later at night, it's looking just a hint soft, particularly after I push the noise reduction so hard. So putting on a little bit of sharpen or details enhancer is gonna help. So let's just pull that back out a little bit and using small details and a little bit of highlight protection and some medium details, we can start to bring that back. And again, what's great is you can control how much those things come back. We can pull down the small details and just bring out the large details, and that will prevent a lot of noise from coming out in the image. So we can really get a nice look. So with complete control over the lens, it's really awesome how you can load that in and get the results that you want. All right, let's finish that out. We'll put a little bit of a vignette on the image here. Just pull in using a post crop vignette, darken the corners a bit, and the image updates and is in great shape. All right, let's go to another image. I'll choose File, Open. And in this case, I want to work on an image that can really benefit from some enhancements to the foliage. So one of the things I love is that there's a great tool for landscape photographers called Foliage Enhancer. And it allows you to just bring out some of the vegetation. Now, this particular image is looking not bad, but we'll go to the landscape workspace and what I want to do is really just recover the highlights a little bit 
and use that Accent AI filter, which does a great job of latching in on some of the details using artificial intelligence. That's looking good, but I want a few tweaks. Now let's go ahead here and bring out the water a little bit using the polarizing filter, and you see it cuts down on some of the glare to bring that back. And now we'll do the foliage enhancer. I can really bring that out and then roll the hue to whatever color I want. Let's back that down a little bit. That's really quite awesome. If you want even more control, you could take advantage of the hue, saturation, and luminosity filter. This is pretty awesome because you can go after a particular area, for example, the greens, and just tone down the luminosity and maybe pump up the saturation just a little or even roll the hue for that value. For example, with the reds here, I'll just roll that slightly to compensate, and now the mud shifts to that more greenish brown, which I like. And I'll darken down those reds a little bit for the bank, and you see how easy it is to target. Let's go after the aqua there, and the blue a little bit, and we'll brighten up the water. That's really quite cool. Now, I wanna to toss on an adjustment layer to control the exposure. Now I could put it on its own layer or I can mask this directly. So actually we'll just keep it on one layer this time and I'll put in an exposure adjustment and pull this down. Now when I click on the masks here and we'll choose the gradient mask and I'm gonna create two blended gradients. So first up, we'll click and drag and then we'll do another one from this way that one looks great. And let's go ahead and click done for a moment. And it adds it. And now I'll click again and do another gradient mask. And we can click and drag from this way. There we go. Creating a nice blend. Hit return. And it's really kind of cool how you can use multiple effects on that and you see that it has its own masks. Plus, that gives us the ability, if we click in here to see, we can actually further modify this and change the blending mode of the mask. So in that case, putting it into overlay created a little bit more dark and moody. So it's kind of awesome that you can actually mask individual filters and change blending modes per filters. So if you're a power user, you can do some pretty incredible things with this. This combined with a regular vignette now just really brings out the center of the image for that drama of the river snaking through. Okay, let's go on to another example. In this case, I want to show you an uh, example for some nature and wildlife. So I've got a photo here shot down in Costa Rica, and I love the alligators here. They really come through, but there's a few things about the photo that are a tad distracting some unwanted elements, plus just some lack of texture due to the harsh afternoon sun. So we'll start out and we'll begin to develop this. So let's go with a landscape presets. And again, very easy to recover details in the raw file. A little bit of contrast there, and it's already looking better. We'll apply a little bit of Accent AI and it just comes to life. I absolutely love how this filter analyzes the image and brings back the details. That's looking good. Put a little bit of color in there. And it's come a long way, but it doesn't feel exactly right. Let's try polarizing. Not too much glare to deal with there. Just a little bit, but it looks pretty good. But I can really finesse this with that HSL filter. Remember, hue, saturation, and luminosity are all the controls in color. So I can take a look at the yellowish color here in the gators. And I can say, you know what? Let's make that a little darker. And you know, let's go to the hue for yellow and roll that more golden or more green. I like that. And a little more saturated. There we go. Tone down the greens there. Make that a little bit darker. We see we get a little bit more texture in the skin. We can do the same thing for the reds. Let's darken down the red for the mud, but make it a little more saturated. Same thing for the orange. And now the color is just amazing. By that separate control, we can really target areas and bring it out. 
All right, I like where this is going, but there's a few distracting things that I don't like about the photo. So I wanna take advantage of the great eraser technology. If you've ever tried cloning inside of Lightroom, it's a very miserable experience, to be honest. And the erase tool here is a lot more like Photoshop's healing brush, except I find that this works really well out of the box. So what we can do is paint over the areas that we want removed from the photo. Now, you can do it a couple of ways. You can lasso around something, like we can just select this stick here that we don't want because it's distracting and it makes a little selection. Or we can grab the paintbrush here and adjust the size of the brush. There we go. And just paint out elements that we don't want in the scene. For example, a little bit of this alligator that's coming in there. There we are. Remove that. There we go. Let's get this one down here. This little tail that's poking into the scene. And same thing up here. We'll just paint that out. Now when you're ready, look it over, make sure nothing's missing, and then just click the erase button. And it's gonna analyze the image, look at surrounding pixels, and try to come up with new pixels. Now you might need to do a little bit of cloning as well to finesse this, it's an extra pass. But the erase tool is great at taking out big objects. And you see there, it came up with all new pixels and removed those things from the scene that were distracting to the composition. I'll click done now, and it's a perfect time to then invoke a little bit of cloning. Now, it's up to you how much of this you use, but I find that erase plus clone is going to give me the most natural results. Now, I'll just choose clone and stamp. Hold down the Option key to set the source point, and we can clone some pixels in from one area to another. There we go. Just mix a little bit of that in there. It does a great job of blending. I find that you can sometimes sample from a few areas to get a really natural blend, and we'll click Done, and those new pixels are added, and this really comes to life. Now. What I like is that you can create your own recipes and presets, and there's a huge collection of presets included. My preference is that those get applied to their own layer. So if you choose one of your own presets or any of the built-in presets, you can add an overlay layer, which is really just an adjustment layer, and then toss on your preset. So here's my big landscape preset, which just pops the color. Now this one has a little bit of a glint in it that I'm gonna remove. In this case, I'll just turn off the sun rays filter, but it's got a lookup table, which gives it a nice filmic look, and it really is starting to come to life, so that's looking pretty solid. And what we can do here is as we finesse this, we can really control how it all comes together. Because this is on its own layer, it's super easy to back that off until you get just the right effect, and that's really pretty amazing. Remember, with our crop tool, we can crop to the exact size that we need. So I can just choose what I need for delivery. Go to the pop-up list here for preset sizes. For example, a seven by five for printing. Frame that up a little bit, press return, and it's non-destructively cropped. That means later on, I can recrop that if needed. Now, one of the best things about Luminar is the ability to save this. When you choose save, it actually makes an awesome native file, and you have the ability to put the original raw file or any source document in there and the full undo history. This means that if I close this and then reopen it, everything is stored in the file. So what we've got here under the history panel is all of our multiple undos. So if you need to come back to this and make an edit, all of these steps are stored. So let's close that. I'll just reopen that file really quick. Now, you see when I reopen that, everything is in there, the entire raw file, plus all of the steps, meaning that I can come back a day later, a week later, a month later, and pick up exactly where I left off and keep making tweaks. All right, let's go on to some more images. Now, this is a great photo of the river up in Potomac, Maryland, and there's a little hair in there that we're gonna take out in a moment. 
but I want to show you how much we can still bring out in this image. Now, there are different workspaces, so things like the Quick and Awesome workspace just make it easy to deal with clarity, vibrance, and saturation so you can dial in what you want without a lot of control, but it still gives you great quick results. If you want more control, taking a look at something like Landscape is going to give you complete control over this image. So we can recover the highlights while lifting the shadows and get a wide dynamic range there. We can easily pop the whites for bright highlights and crush the blacks. And again, that Accent AI filter just brings out wonderful details. Now, I love the adjustable gradient. It makes it easy to create a transition zone. So we can dial that in very simply from top to bottom on the horizon. And I can do things like pull down the exposure in the sky while making that a little bit cooler. Maybe on the bottom here, warm it up for the golden sun. And it makes it simple to pull that together. Now the polarizing filter is going to cut down on the glare in the sky and you can also take advantage of dehaze to really remove some mist or fog. A little bit of foliage enhance and we can target different colors in the background there and shift their color to bring out the vegetation which is pretty awesome. Now I like where this is going and I'll also take advantage of structure. Structure finds details like the clouds and can bring them out. However, it also sees some of the little things there like some of the dust and it enhances that a bit. So we have a little bit of spotting on the lens here, which is no big deal. So we'll set this where we want with a little bit of gentle softness. And now that I can really see some of those hairs, we're going to take out some of that sensor dust. Easy enough here. Let's just put a little radiance in to get a nice gentle glow. And now is the time to invoke the eraser tool. This will make it easy for me to just dust bust and remove any problems. So this is shot by a friend of mine and he, like me sometimes, has a challenge of getting some sensor dust. Maybe you're shooting in a dusty location. Well, we could just pinch and zoom in here, get a nice brush to make it simple, and just click on the spots that are problematic. And what it's going to do is make it easy to eliminate those. So quick pan, there we are. And of course, if you can get your sensor cleaned or send it into the camera shop, this is going to be better. But maybe you're out traveling for a while and you just picked up some of these throughout the day. Nobody likes sensor dust, but it doesn't mean that you have to trash the picture. So this makes it easy just to grab things that we don't want. In this case, I'm really showing it just how much we can do. And I just dab those out. Now what happens is as you put these in, Luminar is going to be able to look around and come up with new pixels and it's going to evaluate what's in the adjacent area. Let's go over that squiggle there. It looks like a little hair. There we go. And I think we got them all. Yep. And I'll click the erase button. Luminar goes to work, finds good surrounding pixels and pulls it out. There we go. Looks great. Looks like I missed one there. So left bracket, smaller brush and just paint, click erase and that's added and cleaned up and it removes any of those blemishes. Now that works for hair, pimples, unwanted objects. Let's say we didn't want this rock down here. I can click around that to select it. There we go and click erase and it will come up with new pixels and attempt to remove the object. Now, on a bigger selection, it takes a little bit longer because it looks around, but it did a great job there. came up with new water and just pulled that rock out. Let's get rid of these right here. There we go. Click Erase. And it's going to take that out of the scene and generate new pixels to fill it in. So this is really quite amazing. Now, when you're done, all you got to do is click the Done button and those edits will be stored. And there's just one small problem with this image. The water while it looks natural, has a little bit of a color cast that I'm not crazy about. And this is super easy to remove with a dedicated filter. Let's add one more filter here. And it's the remove color cast filter. And it's an automatic method. And you can see there that it just latches in. Now you can choose different options or manual. And this will let you better target the filter if you want to be specific about which color is removed. 
but I find that the two auto methods tend to work quite well and make it easy to remove some of the color cast that can ruin a scene. All right, let's finish this out. We'll toss on LUT mapping. And again, I love LUT mapping. This is the ability to load a lookup table and this allows you to very quickly stylize the image. It gives it the look of film. You can adjust the amount and the contrast and the saturation, but there's a wide range of lookup tables. You get some with Luminar and there's tons of other websites where you can download lookup tables. You can even convert your Lightroom presets into LUTs using a cool tool from a guy called John Ellis, which I've had a chance to play with it and it works really well. So I can transfer my Lightroom presets into LUTs. Tools like Premiere Pro, DaVinci Resolve, Video Tools also use lookup tables, which is pretty awesome. Let's go ahead and add one more thing to this image here. And in this case, it's a brand new filter called Sunrays, which makes it easy to add to your image. You see it puts a point of light. Now you can move this around with the place center command and move it behind objects and you see it actually recognizes edges and starts to poke through, which is pretty cool. That's all controlled by the penetration slider here. So you can have it come through stronger or weaker based upon the luminance value. We can also change the color here to warm up the sun if we'd like and warm up those rays a little bit. It's pretty awesome how this can really come into the scene. You can also put that above the scene if you want for it to come down, but this makes it simple to really drag this. Now we can put in the amount slider as well as the look, which is gonna change the feeling, brings up the overall ambience, as well as how many rays there are. Now this can be set quite simply to be pretty minimal or stronger, but this really makes it simple to add a light source that comes through the scene. So feel free to explore this and how it's gonna allow you to create a lighting source in the scene itself. Now, in this particular case, I would actually set it coming from above and adjust the length a little bit there, but this allows us to create some nice light falling into the scene itself. And this makes it easy to add different lighting elements. All right, let's do another image here, but I wanna put some texture into this building so it's really quite strong. It's a pretty flat file to begin with, harsh lighting. So let's go to the Essentials workspace here. And what I wanna do is really recover the highlights and bring up the shadows a little bit. And we'll just adjust the clarity. You see how that comes through. Now what you wanna be careful of is how strong you pull that in because you can get a little bit of a glow. Sometimes instead of doing clarity, I find that just bumping up the contrast slider can start to bring that out. And we'll fill that in with a little bit of the Accent AI filter at a low value. That works quite nice. Polarizing filter is also great at cutting down on some of that glare or the glow. Now, I like where this is going, but I don't feel that the sky color is exactly right. So I'm going to toss on a filter here for HSL. And this is going to make it easy for me to target that sky. So I'll go to the hue here and simply grab the aqua slider and the blue slider, and I can start to roll that hue until we get the temperature that we want, as well as let's tone down the saturation a little bit in that blue sky. While I'm at it, I'm gonna bump up the reds and the oranges here and darken those a little bit so we get great texture. Now, speaking of great texture, one of my favorite filters is called Structure, and this makes it easy to add some depth. Now, you see there that we can really start to bring it out. However, as we start to do this, you might notice that it affects other areas like the sky, which you may not want. Easy enough, let's just add a mask here, and we can do a luminosity mask, and it's gonna evaluate the brightness of the image, and it'll make that very natural and start to blend. Now, that's gonna create a nice blending, and then I'll just click with my paintbrush here as well, and I can just paint this area out. Now, we'll take a look at the mask itself, the luminosity masking worked well. Put a little blend in here. There we are. Let's switch to the gradient mask and we'll just dial that in there. Create a little blend. There we are. And that's going to blend that nicely so that the structure does not apply to the sky as much. And you see there that that makes it simple to blend things in. And if you start getting details that you don't want, let's just open that mask back up for a second. Notice there, 
really working quite well, but I just want to make a tweak. So what we can do here is go to the mask and I'm going to invert it to flip it. And that made it really easy to control. Now let's go in there and we'll just erase away that little spot that got on the dust there. It looks like maybe a little lens spot, maybe from a drop of rain. And I can paint that out very quickly and click erase. And it's going to pull that right out of the shot and it's gone. Let's click done. And those results are saved. Now you can do a lot with your photos here. And once you feel like they're looking in great shape, remember to take advantage of some of the creative recipes. This is really easy because you don't have to throw away your work by just tossing on that new adjustment layer. You can start to apply whatever you want. Now grabbing our filter presets from the bottom, I can go through a wide range. So for example, there's a whole category here of dramatic and that becomes very easy to start to apply different looks and it blends it in nicely. I really love some of these old grayscale looks. And remember, since that's on its own layer, you can change the blending mode of that. So we can go with something like soft light and adjust the opacity to mix that black and white effect in for a grungy look. Another thing that you want to make sure you consider is the ability to add texture layers. So this means that you can add a new image layer above this, navigate and find a texture that you want to use. Let's just go here. I've got one. Here we go. And it's automatically mapped and stretched to the side. This means that you can easily take the texture, blend it in, adjust its blending mode, and you get a great overlay texture, making it look like the image was printed on a surface. Now to finesse this, let's put one more layer. And I think you've been a fan of doing the exposure adjustment layer. This really gives me custom vignettes. So I'm going to toss on both exposure and high key. And what I can do here is create a nice darkening as well as a brightening amount here that really pushes the edge with a nice soft glow. And that's looking really good. We're going to push the black so they're super strong. Now we'll toss on the radial mask and we can place that over our subject. There we go. Adjust the feather and transition and press return. And we've got that great custom vignette now that's drawing our focus to the subject. As you see there, the ability to add your own custom masks really goes a long way to bring out a lot of power. All right, that's a look at the Luminar 2018 release. There's tons more here. The ability to share, the ability to add non-destructive edits, works as a plugin in a whole bunch of different tools. You can actually install plugins into applications like Photoshop, Lightroom, Photoshop Elements, and Aperture, as well as use it inside of Apple Photos. But this is a robust, full-featured tool that includes tons of filters, tons of presets, and a very cool, flexible system of layers and masks that lets you just create amazing results. Be sure to see the description below for a special offer on upgrades and purchasing the software.